Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be going through question 11 of the 2020 NSC Mathematics Paper 1. Um, why I'm posting this video is because I just got my hands on the paper. I was able to go through it and take a look at the questions. All in all, um, it was a fair paper, except for question 11, specifically question 11.3. Um, that I thought was quite a difficult question, and I'm not sure if it should have been included in the paper because it seems to me more like a grade eight or nine maths Olympiad type of question, and it required a lot of thinking. But we're going to go through question 11 from the top just to get some context. So we are told that Harry shoots an arrow at a target board, and every time he shoots an arrow, he has a 50% chance of hitting the bullseye. So question one is to calculate the probability that Harry will hit the bullseye in his first shot and his second shot. So this is quite a simple question. It's for two marks. And all we need to do is multiply some probabilities here. So for shot one, right, he has a 50% chance of hitting the target. So that's a half. And on shot two, he also has a 50% chance of hitting the target, which is also half. So to, to calculate the probability of him doing them uh, both times consecutively, we just multiply this to get a quarter, which is also 0 0.25. So your answer for question one could have been a quarter, 0 0.25 or 25%. Um, either of those three would have been accepted. Let's move on to question two. Question two, slightly more difficult. Calculate the probability that Harry will hit the bullseye at least twice in his first three shots. So this requires a bit more thinking, and I'll show you how, we'd go, how I'd go about answering a question like this. I think in a situation like this, many of you would like to draw a tree diagram to, to look at all the possibilities. But for three shots, that might get a bit big, and I like to try to keep things a bit simple. So what I prefer to do is draw a Venn diagram, where each circle on the Venn diagram is representative of a shot on the bullseye, and an overlap would basically mean um, that um, the, there's two that have basically occurred. Uh, two um, times he's hit the bullseye. So this could be shot one, shot two, shot three. So now these overlapped regions over here, as you can see here, are where two shots have been hit on target, and the middle section would be where all three have hit the bullseye. So the probability of two hitting the target is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.25. That's, the pro that's what we're going to fill in to these overlapped regions over here. So each overlap will have a probability of 0 0.25. So to calculate the probability that he'll hit the bullseye at least twice, we can add all of these up. So 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. But now we have to take into account this middle region because we've added the probabilities of him hitting the bullseye at least twice um, three times, but we haven't taken into account the chance that it hit all three in a row on target because the question says at least. So he could possibly hit all of them on target. So since we've added this, added 0 0.25 three times, what we need to do is we need to subtract two times the center region because we are allowed to have that center region as part of our value once because it says at least twice. So he is allowed to hit it um, three times on the bullseye. However, we can't add that together three times because that can't happen three times. There's only one scenario in which he can hit the bullseye three times. So we're going to have to minus two times 0 0.5 to the power three because that's that probability. And that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.5. So our answer here is 0 0.5. Okay, and now for the most interesting question of this paper. Let's read through it. Glenda also has a 50% a chance of hitting the bullseye on each shot. Harry and Glenda take turns to shoot an arrow, and the first person to hit the bullseye will be the winner. Calculate the probability that the person who, sorry, there's a spelling mistake there, who shoots first will be the winner of the challenge. So basically, we're calculating the probability that the person who, who gets the chance to shoot first will win. So the best way for me to explain this is going to be through means of a tree diagram. So to make this a bit more understandable, 
we'll make the assumption, we'll assume that Harry shoots first. Okay, so that will just make um, showing how the tree diagram is going to work a bit easier. So if Harry shoots first, um, in this scenario, we'll be calculating the probability Harry will win, which is the same thing as the person calculating the probability of the person who shoots first. So if Harry shoots first, we have shot one, right? Now shot one, there's two possibilities that could happen here. Either Harry hits the target and wins the game, or Harry misses and then gives Glenda a chance to win. So Harry could win. So Harry wins. The probability of that happening would be a half. And there's also the probability of half that Harry misses. So Harry miss. Now Glenda will shoot. So Harry misses, giving Glenda a chance to win the game. But obviously, we also have the probability of Glenda missing. So it is possible for Glenda to miss, thereby giving Harry another chance to win. So let's write that down here. So I'm going to do Glenda um, uh, shoots and wins at the bottom just to make um, what I'm trying to show easier. So Glenda wins. That's a half chance of that happening. And there's also a 50% chance that she's going to miss, giving Harry another chance. So Glenda misses. And then Harry will thereafter shoot. Now again, we have the, the scenario where Harry could win. Harry hits the target and wins, also a 50% chance. But now we also have the scenario where he misses again for his second time. Harry misses, and that's also a 50% chance. Now, if Harry misses, things are going to cycle again. Glenda will shoot. Glenda will shoot. She'll have a 50% chance of winning again. Glenda wins. And if she misses, which is a possibility, um, Harry can shoot again. So Harry shoots if Glenda misses. Now you've got to be asking yourself, Ashraf, what you're doing is just going on and on and on and on forever. When is it going to stop? And the simple answer is, that's what makes this question so difficult. This never ends. It continues to infinity. There's this whole cycle because it's possible that they both, in the realm of probability, it is possible that they both perhaps miss their first 10 shots and then only someone um, hits the target and wins. And we have to account for all those probabilities along the way. So we're assuming that Harry shoots first and we want to calculate the probability that the person who shot first will be the winner. So in order to calculate that probability, what that means is we have to add this probability here of Harry winning on his first shot, the probability Harry wins the game on his second shot, the probability Harry will win, go on and win the game on his third shot, and so on. Because there's always that chance of both Harry and Glenda miss, missing and then later giving Harry the opportunity to win. So up until we get to infinity, we have to add up all those probabilities. So let's take a look at what we'd be adding. Well, for the first win, we'd be adding a half. So the probability of winning is a half plus. Now the second probability gets a bit more confusing because we have to track what's happening along the way. Because we have a half chance of going there. There's half chance of going there. Then coming up here, we multiply by another half because it's, there's a 50% chance Harry misses. And then Glenda misses as well. That's 50 times 50, so it's a half times a half. And then there's another 50% possibility um, that Harry could shoot the bullseye and win the game. So we're going to write that there, just put some brackets here. And again, this could happen again. So we could be going down here, up here, and then Harry could win there. So we've got those same three halves that we cycled through in the second win, plus this one over here and this one over here, um, sorry, um, actually this one over here, not this one here, times a half, times a half. And this goes on up until infinity. So we're going to need to use a sum to infinity um, sort of formula to help us calculate this. So I'm just going to rewrite this here. For, for Harry to win on his first shot, he has a 50% chance. For Harry to win on his second shot, it's a half times a half times a half. For him to win, on his third shot, it's a half times a half times a half times another two halves. 
okay? And this carries on up until infinity. So let's simplify this so we can begin to look for a pattern. So we have half here plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 32. Now, if you look closely at this, it begins to resemble a geometric sequence or rather in this case, a geometric series. And you can see between each term, we have a common factor of a quarter because one half times a quarter gives us an eighth and eighth times a quarter gives us one over 32. So in order to solve this question, we'll use our sum to infinity formula for a geometric series, which is a over one minus r. So our first term a is a half. So that's one over two all over one minus our r value is a quarter, one over four. And if you plug that into your calculator and simplify, you're going to get an answer of two thirds. So basically that's the answer to this question. Um, the answer is two thirds, also can be written as 0 0.67 or 66.67%. That's the correct answer to this question. So in any game where there's a 50% chance of um, winning on whenever you have a go or an event, such as a coin toss, um, which is more appropriate for a 50% chance, and the person that goes first is also always going to have double the chance of winning than the person that goes second, because if the person who goes first has a chance of two-thirds of winning, it stands to reason the person going second has a chance of only one-third. So the chance is, chance is double. There is another way that you can use to go about solving this problem, but it requires thinking a bit more algebraically. So we can let x be the probability of, of the person going first, one, winning. So if x is the probability of person one winning, um, one minus x will be the probability of person two winning. So using this, um, and the fact that we know it's a 50% uh, probability of winning each event, we can set up an equation. So the probability of person one winning, right, is going to be equal to a half because on your first go, the chance that you win is half. But that other half, um, we have to account for that. Person two gets their chance. Their chance of winning is one minus x based on um, what we've said so far, but they could lose. So what happens if person two loses? Well, that gives person one the chance of going again and then um, winning. So if you consider the situation where person one misses and then person, person two basically ends up in the position person one was in in the first place, that is person one's chance of winning is now one minus x because the chance of person two winning um, would now be 50%. So we can write this as plus one minus x over two. And now all we have to do to solve the question is solve for x. So this becomes two x equals one plus one minus x. We can take the x's across, that becomes three x equals two, and x equals two thirds, as we saw in the previous um, method that I um, described with the tree diagrams. So as you can see, there's two methods I've given to show about how to solve this question. Obviously, the method with the tree diagram is a bit more intuitive, and you can probably try and understand what's going on where this, this method that I'm showing now is a bit more abstract. I hope this clears up any confusion people might have had around this question. And I hope this shows that this question was not worth three marks. And I think it definitely um, was deserving of at least six marks um, if you use the geometric series method, because that tests both probability along with geometric series and sequences. Um, so thanks for watching. And I hope this clears some things up. Bye. Thank you.